Well, I'm Hud Fries. I'm a, a basic scientist, and I work in an area called glycosylation. That's uh, putting sugar chains onto proteins and cells. And I was really surprised one day when I got a call from a doctor in Germany who said, we have a patient. This boy has lost 40 units of blood. He's probably going to die. Can you help us save him? Why would a doctor in Germany call me? Well, we had published a paper saying that sugars might be useful for helping improve this process of glycosylation. And he had this patient who was deficient in some way in glycosylation. So he reached out to us. And the problem was with, with Max is that he had these bleeding problems. He probably wasn't going to make it. But as it turned out, he could be treated with this simple sugar called mannose. So uh, sugars are involved in metabolism. You eat sugars for energy. But they can also be used to put onto proteins. So what was wrong with Max? Why did mannose help? And was he lacking something? Mannose 6-phosphate. Mannose 6-phosphate. Well, what's that? What's this guy telling us about? Well, it, it turns out that, as you probably know, glucose is one of those really important sugars that can be used for energy. And it also can be involved in glycoproteins. And glucose can be used to generate energy, and it does so in various steps. And one of those steps involves a conversion to fructose 6-phosphate. And it turns out that there is an enzyme that can convert fructose 6-phosphate to mannose 6-phosphate. And that's called PMI. We don't need to go into details. But it can make mannose 6-phosphate. This boy had a deficiency in that enzyme, so he couldn't make enough mannose 6-phosphate. But you know what? By giving him enough mannose, we were able to overcome that deficiency, normalize the small amount of glycoproteins he had, and save him. So, of course, as scientists, we want to try to understand this better. And so what we did was to make a mouse model. And that mouse model would help us understand how the process worked. And we could see if Manos was able to uh, correct any problems that the mouse had. Well, one of the things we did was to actually to give Manos to the mom, thinking that because there might be embryological problems, that we could bypass those by providing enough mannose to her. But you know what happened? Many of the mice died. And those that were born were born without eyes. And you can see in this picture that these mice had cloudy eyes or they actually had no eye at all. And that's because they didn't make a lens. Well, how could we explain this? Did we create some sort of poison? What, what was going on? What was the problem? Mannose 6-phosphate. Oh, wait a minute. You said mannose 6-phosphate saved this kid, and now you're telling me that mannose 6-phosphate just caused all this problem. So what's the issue? What's, what's really going on here? Well, as you can see from our, our past picture, glycoproteins require mannose 6-phosphate, and you can get that from glucose or mannose. But in this case, Max had only a small amount of phosphomannose isomerase, and so when he got a load of mannose, there was enough to take care of him, but in the dose that was given to the mice, it was too much. And the result was that they, in fact, increased the amount of mannose 6-phosphate in the cells, but only the cells in the eye, only in those cells that were developing into a lens. And that's where the problem came from. And it resulted in an in inhibition of this process called glycolysis, which is what generates energy. And so those cells died. And that's the explanation of the poison part of it. So mannose can be a friend or it can be a toxin. And it depends not only on the level of enzyme that you have, but also on the amount of mannose that the cell has to deal with. And different cells have different amounts of phosphomannose isomerase, and therefore they metabolize and accumulate mannose 6-phosphate at a different rate. The eyes were the most sensitive. And so both of those are important to keep in mind, and so you have to keep that at the right levels. So is there any other example besides uh, the mice and the eyes? Well, actually, Max provided the next example. 
And Max, uh, by the time he reached his teenage years, was tired of taking his medication. He decided to skip it for a while. Bad choice, Max, because he ended up going to the emergency room, and they, because they knew Max, were able to treat him. And he admitted that he had not been taking his mannose. So what did they do? They gave him an injection, an IV injection of mannose. But normally, he was drinking it. So all the mannose that you drink doesn't necessarily get into the blood. He had a huge amount of mannose going in, and he immediately went into a stupor, almost like not having enough glucose. And so what did the doctors do? They gave him a shot of glucose, and he recovered. And so that was a lesson in the whole organism that was not a mouse, saying you've got to be careful about how much mannose you have if you have a deficiency in this enzyme. And I think the other point to make is that really, by interaction with patients, by staying close, by being involved with them, you can actually do some good and sometimes maybe even get a call where you can help out. Thanks.